So the mean value theorem says if a function f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b and is differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there must exist a number c in between a and b such that the slope at that point is equal to the slope over the whole entire interval. So what exactly does the mean value theorem mean in everyday terms and how can I understand it visually speaking? Well, let's take a look. So here we have a function who is continuous over its whole domain, so it's continuous on the closed interval from A to B, including the endpoints, and it's differentiable on its whole domain, so therefore it's continuous between A and B as well. So what it says is that if you take the secant line connecting A to B, there's got to be some slope in between A and B, where the slope of the curve at that point is going to be the same as the slope over the whole interval, so for the slope of the secant line. All right, so the mean value theorem guarantees that there's at least one place. Now, there could be multiple places, as we see here. There are actually two different C values. The mean value theorem just says there has to be at least one. Okay, so in terms of this, well, why should I care about the mean value theorem? Might it matter in my daily life? Well, it could, potentially. So let's see this following scenario. We're driving along. Listen to some tunes. Oh, speed limit 60. I'm just going to go a little over. No big deal. Uh-oh. Uh, officer, uh, what seems to be the problem? Well, sir, do you uh, realize that you were speeding? No, there's no way I was speeding. Well, I uh, have some visuals to show you to prove why I know for a fact that you had to be speeding. So I have you recorded it being at mile marker 20 at time t equals zero. And now at mile marker 135, 1.5 hours later. So if I take the change in position, 135 minus 20, I get 115. And if I take my change in time, which would be 1.5 hours minus zero, that gives me 1.5 hours. Therefore, your average velocity over this time frame, this change in position over change in time, which would be equal to 115 divided by 1.5, which gives you about 76 and two-thirds miles per hour. Which means that at some point in time, as your path is going along the road, there's your position versus time graph. At some point in time, between the toll booth and now, you had to have gone 76.6 repeating miles per hour, which would be bigger than the speed limit of 60 miles per hour. Hence, I have to give you a ticket. So why does it matter that it's continuous on the closed interval? So what's special about the closed interval? So let's look at a case here where this function is differentiable on all points in between 1 and 4, but the function's not continuous on the closed interval. So take a look at our slope at our endpoints. Our slope between 1 and 4 is a slope of 0. Now, was there any point in time between 1 and 4 where our slope was 0? No. And the reason why there didn't have to be one is because of the fact that this function wasn't continuous. Now, why does it matter that it has to be differentiable? between the endpoints. Well, here's a place where it's continuous between 1 and 5. However, at x equals 3, my function's not differentiable because our slopes are not approaching the same thing from the left to the right. So as you can see here, the slope over a to b was 0, but there was no place between it where the slope was 0. Now, can you possibly have a value of c that suffices the outcome even uh, if the conditions uh, are not met between those two? Well, yeah, for example, here, your slope over the interval is a slope of 0, and it turns out there was a point in between 1 and 4 where your slope was 0, but it's not that it had to be a guarantee that that was the case. It could happen, but there's no guarantee that it could happen. All right, so let's look at this from an algebraic perspective. Does the mean value theorem hold true for this function? Let's say f of x is equal to this quadratic and we're looking at the closed interval. Since it's a quadratic, it's going to be continuous throughout all the domain, as well as it's going to be differentiable 
are all values of x. So we've got continuity on the closed interval, and we've got differentiability definitely between 1 and 3. So let's see. Is there a point? And can we figure out what that point would be where our slope over the secant line, over the whole interval, would be the same as the slope as uh, would be the same as the slope at a particular point in between those two values. Yeah, the mean value theorem guarantees that there has to be some value between one and three, which has a slope which is the same as the slope over the whole interval. All right. So could we go about finding this value of c? Sure. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would actually calculate what the value of c would end up being. So the mean value theorem guarantees that there's some value of c between 1 and 3 where the slope there is equal to the slope between 1 and 3. So f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1. And if we actually calculate that plugging in into our original function, and actually figure out what our c value would have to be. <clears throat> All right, so first let's go ahead and do some calculations. So I'm going to first find f of 3. So I'll plug 3 into my original function. And I get that my value six here. And then I'm going to find my height at my other endpoint. So I'm going to plug one into my original function. And that tells me that my height at one was equal to a value of four. And so my slope of my average rate of change over the interval from three to one. So we're going to calculate next. So we've got f of 3 minus f of 1, 3 minus 1, so that would be 36 minus 4 over 2, 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we've got 32 over 2, which gives us an average rate of change of 16 over the whole interval. So therefore, there's got to be some point in between 1 and 3 where the slope at that point is equal to a slope of 16. Let's go ahead and take the derivative. So taking the derivative would give us um, 3 times 2x plus 4. And let's plug the point c into that. So that gives me 6, uh, 6c plus 4. And I'm going to figure out where, where that particular slope is equal to 16. So then that gives me that 6c is equal to 12. I've subtracted 4 from both sides. Therefore, c is equal to 2. Was c on the interval between 1 and 3? You betcha. Now, what about this? Can we apply the mean value theorem to a function like f of x is equal to x to the 2 thirds? All right, well, f of x is continuous on the closed interval negative 1 to 1. Okay, my height at negative 1 is 1, and my height at positive 1 is 1, so the slope over that interval is now let's look at the differentiability piece. So I'm going to take the derivative of this function on the left side. So I've got, first of all, the derivative is 2 thirds times x to the negative 1 third. So I'm going to take the limit of this on the left side as x approaches 0 coming from the left. And as x gets closer and closer to 0 from the left side, what happens is, is that this gets bigger and bigger negative. And then as we approach 0 from the right side, our slopes are going to be getting bigger and bigger positive. So therefore, our function is not differentiable at x equals 0. So because it fails that condition, then the mean value theorem doesn't have to guarantee us a point between negative 1 and 1 where the slope is the same as the slope over the whole interval. 
and as I mentioned before, the slope between negative 1 and 1 of our function is going to be a slope of 0. And so let's uh, take a moment to look at our graph and show why the mean value theorem won't work in this particular case. So there's not going to be any c value between negative 1 and 1 such that the slope at c is the same as the slope over the whole interval. Go ahead and calculate the slope over the whole interval, so the average rate of change. And that average rate of change would be to a value of 0 over 2. That's my height at 1 and negative 1 is the same height. So therefore, my slope is 0 over the whole interval. And as we can see from our picture here, there's no point between negative 1 and positive 1 where my slopes are 0. Because my slopes are getting more negative, and as we approach from the right side, my slopes are getting more and more positive, and so we're never approaching a, a slope of 0 ever. So let's look at uh, an AP calculus question. We've got time and hours and the rate of uh, water flowing out of a pipe gallons per hour, and we're told that this function r is differentiable, which implies that the function is also continuous. Okay, So it'll satisfy the uh, conditions for the mean value theorem, which will allow us to show that uh, we'll be able to answer the question in part b, which says, is there some time t such that between 0 and 24, such that r prime of t is equal to 0. So we know that our function is differentiable, which implies, therefore, it's continuous. So since we know that r of t is continuous, on 0, the closed interval 0 to 24, and we're told that it's differentiable everywhere, so that means it has to be differentiable on the open interval between 0 and 24 also. Then we can conclude that there is, by the mean value theorem, that there's some place in between 0 and 24 such that the slope at that point is the same as the slope between the endpoints of 0 and 24. In other words, there's got to be some c value where r prime of c is equal to r of 24 minus r of 10, sorry, r of 0, divided by 24 minus 0. So in other words, the slope over the whole interval is 9.6 minus 9.6 over 24, which is 0, which means that there's got to be some value in between those two where the derivative is equal to 0. There you have it.